we were discussing uh, fin tube heat exchanger. Basically, we were discussing different augmentation, augmentation techniques and then compact heat exchangers, which use uh, augmentation, uh, any suitable augmentation technique to have high rate of heat transfer within a small volume. And uh, in that, uh, fins or extended surfaces are uh, techniques for augmenting or enhancing the rate of heat transfer. And uh, one of the very uh, important class of heat exchangers are fin tube heat exchangers. So, today we like to see fin tube heat exchangers. Already we have some acquaintance with fin tube heat exchanger, but today we will um, uh, stress upon some analysis which will be uh, the primary step of designing a fin tube heat exchanger. So, if we go to the next slide, <coughs> uh, fin tube heat exchangers are basically cross flow heat exchangers. Uh, in most of the cases, uh, it is a cross flow heat exchanger and it is for uh, gas liquid heat exchange process. So, liquid or liquid vapor mixture will be passing through the tube side. Very rarely, there could be some design where it is a gas to gas uh, heat exchanger and gas is passing a purely, um, uh, purely gaseous phase or vapor phase without any liquid uh, may be uh, allowed to pass through the tube side. But that applications are almost rare, I mean very rare and almost non-existent. So, we will not consider those kind of application. We are considering the most common application of fin tube heat exchanger, where <coughs> liquid will be passing through the tube site and uh, outside of the tube will be finned and gas will be passing across the finned outside surface of the tube. Different designs of fins different arrangement of tubes, even different design of tubes are possible. Uh, so, this some of these things have already been discussed. Now, the fins they can have different heights, what we call uh, the uh, fin length uh, most commonly in case of longitudinal fin, in case of radial fin or in case of circumferential fin we call it sometimes we call it the height of the fin. Okay. So, because we are considering tubes whether they are uh, circular tube or uh, non circular tube, the fins on these tubes will be mostly circumferential tube. So, circumferential tube we do not call the I mean we, we do not uh, um, I mean <coughs> uh, call it or denote it as the length of the fin but we call the height of the fin. So, there are two classification low fin tubes, low fin tubes here the fin heights are small. So, if the outer diameter of the uh, uh, fin sorry outer diameter of the tube is d r is denoted by capital D uh, subscript r capital D subscript r and uh, L is the uh, length of the fin or height of the fin, then for low fin tube the range has been given and then for high fin tube also the range has been given. So, what we get from there here that low fins are of smaller height. So, if they are of smaller height most of the cases they are made integral with the fin sorry integral with the tube. What does it mean? That means, the tube material is cut to produce this fin. So, basically one started once one can start with a tube of higher thickness, then make small fins on the tube outside surface of the tube by machining. <coughs> so, this is uh, uh, how the low uh, fin tubes are produced. High fin tubes on the other hand they have got higher length of the tube a uh, higher length of the fins and these fins are separately mounted they are made of separate material 
they are separately manufactured and then ultimately they are mounted over the outer surface of the tube. So, this is the difference between low fin tube basically these are integral fin tube, fin and the tube are made of same material by machining these fins are produced and high fin tube this, this, these fins are separately manufactured and then fixed on the outer surface of the tube. <coughs> Low fin tubes are used in many cases uh, like condensation etcetera where outside the tube you have to have condensation phase change heat transfer. So, more than increasing the surface area these fins uh, do uh, or rather uh, perform some, some other duties like uh, they can enhance the rate of heat transfer <coughs> in phase change heat transfer they can take some unique role. Then low fins are generally integral fin tube integral fins that is what I have mentioned. <coughs> now, let us have some idea regarding the fin tube heat exchanger. We are slowly developing this uh, topic. So, many times I have referred to fin tube heat exchanger, but even then let me take another um, uh, <coughs> another another opportunity to do uh, give some idea regarding fin tube heat exchanger. So, it is like this that if it is a gas liquid heat exchanger then it would be good to have the liquid in the tube side. So, tubular construction will be there. So, let us say we have got tubular construction this is one tube this is another tube this is the third tube all in a row and then on there could be other tubes like this okay you can understand that there are a number of tubes like this uh, if we see the cross sectional view, so the cross sectional view will be something like this okay. and through the tube the fluid is passing. So, that means the fluid is passing in this direction, in this direction like this and across the tube. So, this is your liquid some liquid and then across the tu tube then your gas is passing. So, this is kind of a uh, tube heat exchanger or tubular heat exchanger where only we have used bare tubes. This, this is the first development of tube tubular ex heat exchanger for gas liquid application and where we have got liquid in the tube side and gas um, outside the tube and in a cross flow arrangement. Now, many cases this kind of uh, heat exchangers are used because of their low cost and because as they do not have any fins etcetera they will give very less amount of pressure drop at the same time the tubes can be cleaned easily. So, where you have to uh, handle that dirty gas etcetera maintenance is a problem this kind of heat exchangers are to be used. Now, the next thing what we can do for making the heat exchanger compact and having higher effectiveness of the heat exchanger we can provide some sort of a fin to all the tubes. So, there will be some gap between the fins otherwise air cannot pass. So, something like this we will provide some gap will be there we will show you a good figure later on. So, basically on this this is a tube and on this tube we are at regular interval we are providing fins. So, this is kind of one fin. So, this is another fin. So, at regular interval we are providing fin on the tube. So, this is <coughs> then our heat exchanger becomes your fin tube heat exchanger. So, what are the challenges in this uh, uh, fin tube heat exchanger analysis? So, any heat exchanger uh, design uh, we have this basic uh, equation that is Q dot is equal to U A 
into delta t effective or mean. So, here in case of this fin tube heat exchanger whatever may be the fin arrangement whatever may be the tube arrangement we have to have this kind of basic equation. Suppose we want to find out the uh, overall sorry we want to find out the amount of heat transfer then we have to use this kind of a formula. So, first we have to determine the delta t effective or delta t mean depending on the arrangement of the two fluids whether it is counter flow whether it is cross flow whether <coughs> it could be cross flow only but whether it is cross counter flow or uh, a parallel counter flow kind of a arrangement or whether it is a complex kind of arrangement depending on that we have to have delta t effective. So, once we have delta t effective from the arrangement which I am not going to discuss um, uh, uh, in this uh, particular section, we have to also determine u and a that means overall heat transfer coefficient and the area we have to heat transfer area we have to calculate and you know that u and a are not independent. <coughs> so, we have to uh, the relationship etcetera have been told earlier. So, uh, here basically we will uh, see how to determine u and how to determine a. Now, a uh, particularly we have to have some idea regarding the a on the fin side. So, basically uh, a fin side. So, this we will discuss how to determine a on the fin side and we will also discuss how to determine the overall heat transfer coefficient or u. Now, overall heat transfer coefficient or u that will depend on basically if we neglect fouling then it will depend on three different resistances. Inside the tube fluid is flowing, so there will be convective uh, heat transfer inside the tube that resistance will come. Then the tube material that is a uh, solid barrier uh, on the path of the heat transfer, so conduction kind of resistance will come and then on the fin side air is passing, so another resistance convective resistance for air will come. Now, the third thing third uh, resistance is more crucial because the fin passages are complex and we will see that we have to use different kind of correlations etcetera for that. So, I am giving the principle or the uh, philosophy how this design can be done. Inside the tube the design is not that much difficult because whether we take circular tube or non circular tube most of the cases we assume the flow to be fully developed. Why? Because the tube length is so large that the <coughs> developing region is small compared to the fully developed region. So, uh, <coughs> flow will be in most of the cases almost all the cases it will be in the turbulent region. So, detach boiler kind of correlation will give us the heat transfer and some sort of a well known relationship many available relationships are there we can calculate the pressure drop for the liquid side. Gas side it is not that easy, gas side due to the complex geometry it is not, such, not so easy and our emphasis of this lecture or the coming lecture maybe will be on the prediction of gas side or fin side, prediction of heat transfer at the fin side and prediction of pressure drop at the fin side. So, this will be our emphasis. So, with this let me proceed, <coughs> but uh, let me tell you uh, one thing uh, I just uh, want to share with you that you see that uh, uh, though time to time I have shown that for a circular tube we can have we can have different kind of fins. Let us say this is the circular tube, 
we can have a fin like this. In this case of course, we do not use a single fin number of fin just like a star shape this one is used. So, here we can have another fin on this side we can have another fin like this and if we see the cross section. So, the it will look like this. So, these are longitudinal fins provided over a circular tube. Okay. So, this is one kind of design one can have. Another design one can have that this is a circular tube, on the circular tube you are having some sort of a disc. So, this is a circular tube and on the circular tube we are having this is your fin. So, this is disc fin or circumferential fin or radial fin, annular fin different names are given. <coughs> this is one kind of a design, but even in this design one can have uh, um, uh, different variation and uh, then one can have the continuous plate fin which is pierced by a number of circular tube. So, let us say this is continuous plate fin. So, mainly there are these three variation, but there could be more variation also for circular tube. So, these are kind of different fins, fin arrangement what we can have for circular tube and all these fins or rather all these arrangement can be used in fin tube fit exchanger. Good, let us, uh, let us go to the next slide. So, here the geometrical characteristics of circular fin uh, and uh, circular fin of uniform thickness. So, that is why it is called rectangular cross section. So, this is this is more commonly used and let us see what are the geometrical characteristics. So, let us say the, uh, uh, the outer diameter of the tube is d r basically it is the root diameter of the fin that is why subscript r has been used and then outer diameter of the fin that is d t that is the tip diameter of the fin that is why the subscript t has been used. W is the width of the fin and S is the interfin distance. So, similar thing will be repeated number of times. So, let us say we are considering L length of the tube, the length of the tube which we are considering that is L and in that L length there will be number of uh, fins on the outer surface of the tube. Uh, if we go to the next figure, so this is what most uh, of the cases we use if we use individual fins, then this is inline array. So, inline array you can see that in the inline array uh, we have got, uh, we have got um, uh, two geometrical uh, figures, sorry, geometrical parameter P1 and P2. P1 is the <coughs> one pitch and P2 is another pitch. So, basically, the array is defined if it is inline array. So, the uh, array is defined by two different pitches P1 and P2, and in this figure what we can uh, understand that uh, if I give this is basically your d r and this is your d t root diameter and tip diameter. Air is flowing through this and air is flowing through the air is flowing through the uh, arrow direction and liquid is flowing normal to the diagram. So, this is how is our arrangement. Next arrangement if we go, next arrangement if we go then 
<coughs> Next arrangement if we go then what we find that um, uh, we have got staggered array. So, staggered array uh, then for uh, defining staggered array we need three dimensions three different pitches p 1, p 2 and p 3. So, these three pitches are to be given for defining the array. With this the fin tube uh, heat exchanger geometry these are the geometrical parameter external diameter of the tube at the fin root that is d r outer diameter of the fin d t height of the fin d f minus d r by 2 that is equal to L that is fin length also we can call it width of the fin W space between fins that is S length of the tube L T and then a number of tubes in a row. So, they basically tubes we can think of that they are uh, they are um, <coughs> arranged in some sort of uh, cubical uh, matrix. So, number of tubes in a row that is N T and number of rows that is n r. Then the total number of tubes will be n t into n r that is capital N. Pitch of the tubes in the plane perpendicular to the flow that is p 1, pitch of the tubes in the direction of flow that is p 2 and uh, pitch of the tubes on the diagonal plane in staggered array. Only in case of staggered array this will come. So, this is p 3. So, with all these things we can define the geometry of a fin tube heat exchanger. And another uh, dimension should come uh, only we are interested here for outside heat transfer. So, that is why that dimension has not come. So, that is the inner diameter of the tubes that should also come to define the geometry completely. So, now you can understand that how many geometrical parameters are coming in a fin tube heat exchanger. Out of all these parameters. Uh, this p 3 will not be relevant for uh, inline array of um, tubes otherwise all the parameters are common for any uh, kind of geometry of the heat exchanger. So, then <coughs> we we have to make certain calculation. Uh, the outer surface of the tube including the fin surface is taking part in heat transfer. Basically the fluid stream that is the air that is making contact with the outer surface of the tubes. So, total surface area of n fin tube of length L is given by this formula. Uh, there is some sort of uh, uh, in inner step uh, of this formula that is given below, but what I will request you that you should try to derive this formula. So, the total area that will be the fin area plus unfinned tube area. So, A f is the fin area, A w is the wall area that is unfinned tube area. So, where the surface area of the fin A f that is dependent on uh, total number of tubes that is capital N, uh, length of the tube L t and then this is your this is your um, uh, <coughs> the fin surface uh, contribution. Uh, there is a small uh, typographical mistake. So, this d f this should be this subscript should be d t this is your tip diameter it should not be f it should be t please uh, make a correction uh, or note the correction that here it should not be d f it should be d t here also it should be d t here also it should be d t and then at the tip there is some area so d t into w s and w already has been explained. So, this is the fin area. So, basically if I have to explain uh, I can explain it like this you see the fin is the fin is like this. On the surface of the tube 
and so it has got one surface over here another surface over here and then there is one tip surface over here. So, uh, that is how this thing has come. Okay. So, uh, uh, this is how we have calculated it and I uh, request you all of you to uh, do this exercise. Then the surface area of the tubes between the fins that is given by this particular formula and then the total tube surface area with fins removed. Suppose there is no fin, then we have got this is the uh, area of the bare tube if there is no fins. Uh, let me do one thing, let me go back to the some previous slide to make things to I will try to make things little bit clear. So, here if we see, <coughs> here if we see, uh, so what we what we find that this is the bare area of the tube from where heat transfer is taking place and this is the area of the sorry, this is the area of the this is the bare area from where heat transfer is taking place this is the area of the fin from where heat transfer is taking place, this is the area of the fin from where heat transfer is taking place. So, we have to calculate all these areas to get the heat transfer. Okay. So, now let us go back. All right. <coughs> With this, uh, with this, with this, we have got the we have got the area of the fin, area of the bare tube, area of the uh, tube uh, which is not covered by the fin. So these basic areas we have got. I would request you to um, uh, get this. Uh, do the calculation yourself and get this expression, check this expression. Then minimum flow area for most <coughs> cross flow heat exchanger is in the plane perpendicular to the flow direction is given by this particular formula. Okay. Nt, Lt all these things have been told earlier that P 1, one of the pitch, this is pitch normal to the direction of flow this is dr root diameter of the fin w that is the <coughs> width of the fin length that is the length of the fin and all these things this is s the gap between two fins so this is how we will get the minimum flow area so by this what we have done we have got some idea regarding fin tube heat exchanger and we are trying to do some analysis which will enable us ultimately to design fin type heat exchanger. And here I have told certain things are important that fin side calculations are important. So, fin side area we have to calculate, fin side <coughs> heat transfer coefficient we have to calculate and uh, uh, for that we have to consider the geometry and that is why we have considered the geometry and from there we have calculated different areas. Thank you. So, we will continue with this topic in the coming lecture.